today and do something um, a little different. I had this plan to make myself a wall hanging for quite a long time and I've been kind of working on this project on the side while I've been working on all the little things for you guys and all the other little stuff that I've been up to. Um, so this was sort of something I was going to just do for me, but then I realized as I was going, I was taking pictures, I thought this would make a really cool tutorial. And since last week we did the single crochet, the chain, the slip knot, and the cinch circle tutorials just to kind of bring everybody up to speed, all the new beginners and anybody who needed extra help, this fits in perfectly with the beginner stuff because it's not necessarily super easy, but it's also not hard, and when you finish the product, it looks absolutely fantastic. So I know you're probably wondering what I am talking about. Um, I don't know if maybe uh, you've noticed my t-shirt, but um, I'm a bit of a, I've been a bit of a game geek, and I love um, all the old retro stuff from the 80s. Anyway, long story short, I made this. <laughs> I'm going to hang it up on my wall, it's going to be a little mini wall hanging, and I'm going to do another one like this down the road, but I'm going to make it actually blanket sized, and I thought I would share with you guys today how to make one of these for yourself. It's a lot easier than it looks, and it really didn't take that much time, um, and there's two ways you can do it, so I'm going to share that with you guys today, so uh, let's, <laughs> let's totally geek out. <laughs> Okay, in order to make um, a graph version, or in order to make sort of a pixelated um, picture like this, you need a couple things that aren't usually considered uh, typical crochet uh, supplies. You're going to need graph paper, or you're going to need a ruler, a pa some paper, and a pencil in order to create a graph, but having graph paper is probably the easiest thing. Onto your graph, um, you are going to draw the image that you want. Now, if you're really good at drawing, this probably won't be very difficult for you. Just try to remember um, to do full-size blocks, like don't half your blocks because uh, I haven't gotten into making triangular pieces yet. We'll do that down the road, but let's not talk about that right now. Uh, so you want to uh, create a picture that's going to have, or it looks okay with square sides. That's why these retro uh, video game images are so great, because they were literally created with square pixels. Um, and of course, as you know, there's tons and tons and tons of these characters out there. All I did for this one uh, was, because I knew I wanted to do a Mario, I went on Google Images, and I, I googled 16-bit um, Mario and uh, this picture was literally the first thing that came up and he was already, because he's a, a, an old video game character, he's already uh, drawn like in the squares. You can see all the individual squares. So the thing that I did was I took my graph paper and I counted out the number of squares across and the number of squares down and I blocked off that piece of graph and I'll show you that picture um, in a second, and then I took the right colored pencils or markers and I colored in the corresponding squares to match the pixelated picture I was looking at on Google. And you can do that for literally anything. If that seems a little too complicated, you can just go and borrow a cross stitch pattern that's pre existing. If you're interested, I'm also on Pinterest under Jada and Stitches, and I have an entire board dedicated to just really cool graphs. It's called Great Graphs, and I've been putting in cross-stitch graphs, uh, video game characters, cartoon characters, uh, words, images, stuff that I really, really like, all in graph format so that I can go ahead and either cross-stitch it or quilt it or crochet it later. So that's how you want to start. Um, the next thing you want to do is you want to decide um, the, the kind of yarn you're going to use and make sure you get the right hook. Now this is all uh, Red, Heart, Red Heart Super Saver and it's really really important that you use the same sized yarn throughout the entire project otherwise it'll throw your squares off and then your entire image will end up looking kind of out of whack. So you want to make sure you have all the exact same sized yarn and you want to have a hook that naturally goes with it. I used the Red Heart Super Saver and I used a 5.5 millimeter hook and the reason I did that is because the um, the gauge I was using was five stitches by five rows so it's sort of like making a mini little um, dish rag like we did last week. Um, if you're not comfortable doing 
a perfect square by single crocheting back and forth. And if you're confused by what I'm saying, refer back to the single crochet uh, tutorial that I did last week. Um, if you're uncomfortable doing that, you can make miniature granny squares. And granny squares will always be perfectly square if you use the same hook and the same size yarn. And if you're unsure of how to make a granny square, you can check out our granny square tutorial, and I'll post that link down below as well. So that's how you make your squares. The last thing you need to do is just make sure you count out how many squares of each color you're going to need, make that many squares, and then you lay them all out according to your graph, you sew it together using the corresponding yarn color and a yarn needle, and then once you're done, you just single crochet a border all the way around. And there you have it! One super adorable like wall hanging and if you make them bigger you can have uh, an entire blanket and I'm totally gonna do that. Now think Minecraft, think all the old Nintendo games, um, think really simple images too, like you can even start with something like a smiley face. Um, just remember that you want to use it in solid blocks. So the bigger you make your graph um, and the more squares you use in your graph, the um, more uh, smoother the edges will look on the uh, outside of your image. So um, you can make this as complicated as you want, you can make it as simple as you want, and if you've never done anything like this before, you might want to try and start with a really simple image. Or just Google um, graphic images or cross-stitch patterns or all the old Nintendo characters, grab a graph and just start. It's really that easy. Um, I'm going to include a mathematical equation at the end of this video um, that will show you how to figure out exactly the size you want to make something from a graphed picture. Uh, because I specifically made mine that size, and there's a whole mathematical equation to figuring it out, and I'm going to include that at the end as well as just standing here trying to explain it because I'm not really good at explaining mathematical equations, but I can do them. So I will include that at the end on a color board. So if you're interested in that, stay tuned for that. That'll be right at the end. Um, yeah. So that is today's super awesome geek out tutorial. And uh, we will get something else up really soon. I'm going to do some more of the basic videos, um, like the half double crochet. We're going to do the double crochet. And then we're going to get into some of the special stitches, like the V-stitch, the shell stitch you guys already know if you've done the granny square pattern. Um, but we'll do that on the straight too, because um, that did come up in conversation a little while ago uh, with somebody else. So we will get to those shortly. But today, just enjoy geeking out on a Sunday afternoon with the old Nintendo characters, and uh, we will talk to you again really soon. Thanks for tuning in, guys. Please like and subscribe and share it with all your friends, and we will see you again really soon. Bye! <laughs>